Here's a few more examples of uh, placing salts in water and determining if the pH was acidic, basic, or neutral. So let's look at our first example here, ammonium nitrate. When we put ammonium nitrate in solution, it completely dissociates to form NH4 plus and NO3 minus. Now, we need to consider how each of these ions will react, will behave in water. Uh, so, what I like to do is write out an equilibrium in water for each of the ions. Whenever we have the cation, we know that that cation is, uh, is going to donate its proton to water to form H3O plus and be left with one proton less. So in this case, that's ammonia and H3. And so this equilibrium can happen because the product form ammonia is a weak base. When we put nitrate ion in solution in water, With our anion, what we would expect to happen is water to donate a proton to that anion. So we could form HNO3 and OH minus. But we know that HNO3 is a strong acid, which completely dissociates in water. So formation of a strong acid from the nitrate ion in water will not happen. So this species does not affect the pH. Therefore, the only species we have to worry about affecting the pH is the ammonium ion. And if we look at the product side, ammonium ion produces H3O plus uh, when it's placed in water and so that means that our solution should be acidic. When we put sodium fluoride in water, it'll completely dissociate to form the sodium ion and the fluoride ion. Now let's look at how each of these could react with water and form an equilibrium. So we'll take the sodium ion plus water and that'll be in equilibrium with, if this reaction were to occur, we would form sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and H+. But we know that sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so this reaction will not occur. Sodium ion does not affect the pH of the solution. For F-, if we put that in water, Water can donate a proton to the F- minus to form HF and OH-. Minus. HF is a weak acid, and so this equilibrium will occur in solution, and this equilibrium produces hydroxide ion, so we should end up with a basic solution. When we put KCl in solution, it produces potassium ion plus chloride ion. And again, if we were to react each of these ions in sequence uh, with water and look at its equilibrium, um, K plus could form KOH plus H plus. But we know that KOH is a strong base, so this reaction does not occur. Uh, Cl minus with water that forms an equilibrium with HCl and OH minus. But we know that HCl is a strong acid, so this equilibrium doesn't occur. The strong base and the strong acid both completely dissociate, and so we would never form these products. And so that means that the, the 
H plus ion, the OH minus ion, would never form because of these ions, and so the pH is not affected. So we'll end up with a neutral solution. For the sodium carbonate, when we put sodium carbonate in solution, we form two sodium ion and a carbonate ion. We already saw in our sodium fluoride example that sodium ion does not react with water to form uh, sodium hydroxide and then H+. So this will have no effect on pH. But what about carbonate? So if we put carbonate ion in solution with water, we'll end up with HCO3 minus plus OH minus. This equilibrium could occur. Uh, HCO3 minus can, in this case, act, uh, can form it's a weak acid. It could also act as a weak base and donate as proton, or excuse me, accept another proton. Um, but in this case, uh, we're only really concerned about this equilibrium and OH minus does form, which means we should have a basic solution. In this problem, we're told that we have four different options for an unknown salt, and we place 0.1 molar uh, of that salt into water, and we end up with a neutral pH. Now we want to figure out what is the identity of the salt. So what we can do in this case is consider all of the ions that are formed. Oops. When we place these salts in solution, so with potassium bromide, we would form potassium ion and bromide ion. With ammonium chloride, we would form NH4 plus ammonium ion and chloride ion. With potassium chloride, we'd form potassium ion and CN minus. And with potassium sulfate, we would form 2K plus plus SO4, 2 minus sulfate ion. So now we need to consider how each of these ions would affect the pH of the solution. Now, we know that the uh, conjugate base of a strong acid will not affect the pH. And so anything that's a conjugate base of a strong acid, we're just going to ignore. So in that case, that's chloride ion and bromide ion. CN minus uh, in solution can form HCN plus OH minus. Okay, this is HCN is a weak acid. SO4 2 minus can react with water to form HSO4 minus plus OH minus. Both of these ions would produce uh, would, would f produce OH minus and, and cause the solution to be basic. The other thing we know is that the conjugate acid of a strong base does not affect the pH. So let's look at all of our cations here, which are the conjugate acids of the strong base, and see um, if any of them, well, if any of them are conjugate acids of strong bases. So potassium shows up three times. Um, the strong base that is, that those are the conjugate acid of is potassium hydroxide. So we know those are not going to affect the pH. Ammonium ion, on the other hand, can have an equilibrium with water and form ammonia and H3O plus. So this would form an acidic solution. So given what we've seen, 
uh, ammonium chloride should form an acidic solution. Potassium cyanide should form a basic solution. And potassium sulfate should form a basic solution as well. KBr, on the other hand, because it not, neither one of the ions that are formed in solution affect the pH, should produce a neutral solution. And that's what we would find if we were to actually perform this experiment. So, potassium bromide here uh, is our salt that gives a neutral solution.